Are you curious about the future of banking? Do you want to know how the financial crisis of 2024 will impact the banking industry? Brace yourselves for a wild ride as we explore how many large banks will be forced to close hundreds of branches across America. Let's dive in. Bank of America is planning to close 20 more retail branches, and Wells Fargo has recently shut an additional 15 as the two mega banks continue to reduce the size of their branch networks. Bank of America is seeking permission from the Office of the Comptroller of Currency to close the branches, which stretch from coast to coast. Seven of the anticipated closures will affect branches in California, including three in the San Francisco Bay Area. Three closures are scheduled for both New York and Connecticut. Offices in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Texas, Oregon, Wisconsin, and Florida are also scheduled to be shut. According to a report by the Financial Times, U.S. retail banks have been reducing their branch networks and trimming headcount in the first half of 2023 in anticipation that much of the foot traffic that went digital during pandemic lockdowns will never return. Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and J.P. Morgan closed more than 250 branches in the first half of the year, accounting for 1 to 5 percent of their networks. San Francisco-based Wells Fargo, which had the highest branch count in the U.S. at the start of the year, took the lead by closing 154 branches, or 3% of its domestic network, and reducing headcount by 6%. Citigroup cut its global branch count by roughly 100, or 4%, with closures spread across the U.S., Mexico, and Asia. J.P. Morgan closed about 40 branches, or 1% of its network. Although foot traffic at branches has fallen dramatically over the past decade, banks have said physical outposts remain important for acquiring and retaining customers. Bank of America has said it plans to lower its total branch count with the help of digital banking services. As of October 13, Bank of America had 3,798 U.S. branches, according to the data from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp. Large and regional banks frequently evaluate the size of their branch networks and make adjustments as needed. Last month, J.P. Morgan Chase closed 14 former Republic Bank branches in California as part of its plan to shrink First Republic's branch network after acquiring the failed bank in May. At the same time, J.P. Morgan continues to open new branches. Bank of America and Wells Fargo also adjust their branch networks frequently. According to recent OCC bulletins, Bank of America plans to open new branches in locations such as Pittsburgh, Ohio, and Utah, while Wells Fargo will open new offices in the New York City boroughs of Brooklyn and Queens. Chase opened 200 branches last year in markets such as Minneapolis, Albuquerque, and Boston, even though its total branch count has fallen. Analysts have long predicted that online and mobile banking would eventually render many bank branches and jobs redundant, but the pandemic has accelerated digital adoption. Even customers who might have been hesitant to use a banking app for a large transaction or mortgage application were forced onto digital platforms during the lockdown. At Bank of America, digital channels accounted for 44% of all account openings and loan origination in the most recent quarter. That was slightly down from 47% in the same period period last year when most of the country was in lockdown, but well above 29% in 2019. According to a report by the Financial Times, Bank of America's branch count fell only marginally in the first half of 2023, but it cut 2,500 staff in the second quarter in part because of what CEO Brian Monahan described as consumer efficiency. Retail job cuts have historically been a sensitive issue in the banking sector, which is often accused of putting profit over people by progressive politicians. Bank executives including Wells Fargo CEO Charlie Scharf and Monahan predicted headcount would probably fall further this year, but most through staff leaving or retiring, which is less likely to result in a backlash. Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, two of the largest U.S. banks, collapsed in March 2023. SVB, which catered to technology startups and venture capital firms, had more than $209 billion in assets at the end of 2022, making it the second biggest bank to fail since the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation started keeping records in 1934. Signature Bank, which counted many big New York law firms and real estate companies as customers and was one of the few mainstream banks to seek out cryptocurrency deposits, had nearly $110.4 billion in assets at the end of 2022, ranking it as the fourth largest bank failure after adjusting for inflation. Silicon Valley Bank failed after depositors rushed to withdraw funds over concerns that, that the bank might become insolvent. It is the second biggest bank failure in the U.S. history and the largest since the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation was forced to take control of Washington Mutual in 2008 during the subprime housing crash. 
SVB's collapse spooked customers at other banks, including clients with deposits exceeding the FDIC's $250,000 deposit insurance limit, and raised concerns about possible runs at other financial institutions. Hiding those fears, New York State regulators on Sunday shuttered Signature Bank, the third biggest failure in U.S. banking history. Signature Bank was shut by regulators after its massive bets on cryptocurrency turned sour, becoming the second victim of the turmoil that's now rippling across financial markets. So why are banks closing so many branches? According to S&P Global Market Intelligence data, the number of bank branches across the U.S. have been decreasing since 2010, and the movement has accelerated this decade. In 2009, there were nearly 100,000 branches across the U.S., which was the last year that physical locations increased. However, as of 2023, there are fewer than 80,000 branches in the country. According to S&P Global Market Intelligence data, the number of bank branches across the U.S. have been decreasing. There were about 79,000 bank branches in the U.S. at the close of 2022, and the industry has closed hundreds more so far this year. Analysts say that banks are investing more in their online platforms, where customers prefer to handle increasingly more of their banking transactions. As a result, fewer branches are needed, and banks are continuously trimming their physical footprints in response, pushing some of the savings to their bottom lines and, and reinvesting the rest in evolving technology. U.S. banks shuttered a net 2,927 branches in 2021, which lowered the U.S. branch count to about 80,950. This set a record for closings and marked an increase of 38% from 2020, the previous record year. A long-running merger and acquisition movement across the industry has played a role in the downsizing of branches. Banks often pursue acquisitions of competitors to cut expenses on overlapping staff, services, and facility. The savings support profits. In recent years, closing branches has proven integral to deal-related cost-cutting large national and regional banks have led the branch downsizing charge, mostly because they have the largest networks and, therefore, the most cutting to do. However, banks of all sizes are shifting investments away from physical locations and towards digital platforms. To be sure, banks are not doing away with the branches altogether. Most bankers say that even their most tech-savvy customers want physical bank offices as which they seek financial advice, open new accounts, or manage major transactions such as large loans. Banks also say branches in high traffic areas function as vital billboards in key markets. In neighborhoods with booming populations or fast-growing economies, banks will carefully open some new branches, even as they close others elsewhere. What's more, some community banks say their large competitors have scaled back branches so much that small banks are keeping relatively robust brick and mortar operations to fill the void. What will happen to the banking industry in 2024? Will the financial crisis cause many large banks to close hundreds of branches across America? What will be the impact on the economy and the individuals? Comment your thoughts on this, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.